Our first speaker is Jakub Czartowski from Jelonian University, and he will tell us something about cyclic projectivity designs and how to find them. Kuba, please. Yeah, so thank you, Wojtek, for inviting me, and uh, thank you very much because it is quite a pleasure and an honor to be the first speaker for any seminar. And today I will talk, be talking a little bit about a paper that appeared quite a long time ago already on Archive, even though it's constantly... Okay, not constantly updated, but uh, ver still under the process of uh, review. You can find the number down here. Uh, three seconds, let me just do it properly. You can find the number of the paper down here. And it's been uh, done in a collaboration with three of my wonderful collaborators. From left to right, it's Victor Avea Gonzalez and Dardo Goshenechi, and I think we all know uh, Professor Karol Rzyczkowski. And let me start the whole seminar with, okay, beforehand, a little disclaimer. If you have any questions in the meantime, please interrupt me at any point, because otherwise I might actually run under time rather than over time. So let me start with a little historic uh, motivation, I would say. So a little bit of background. There is idea of numerical integration. So we have some sort of a function at our disposal. In this case, we can think about it as being over a finite inter interval from minus one to one without uh, any loss of generality. And we would like to not approximate, but evaluate this integral exactly, given that uh, the function t, ft, is a polynomial of order t. So just to give you a little bit of a feeling of what I'm uh, saying here, let me focus on a uh, degree two, so the quadratic polynomials. And in this case, in principle, we are faced with some kind of a parable, parable and we would like to find an optimal finite set of points, which allows us to elevo evaluate the integral from here to here, exactly. So a specific uh, choice here is so-called two-point Gauss quadrature with two points symmetrically distributed at plus minus one over square root of three. We, one can, of course, take a different choice of uh, points. For instance, the points at the very ends of the interval and the middle point with four times the weight. Now, let's go to something similar but not over an interval think about a sphere so we would like to think about uh, averaging over a sphere some sort of a function polynomial this kind this time uh, thinking about polynomials uh, over spheres so in spherical coordinates Th this kind of averages of uh, similar functions can be also carried out using finite sets of points in this case showcasing an octahedron. Here you can see the a formal uh, formulation of what I just said in s a little simpler po uh, words, still thinking in polynomials, thinking on in degree t. And once, interestingly, if you think about it, spherical t designs, because of uh, the properties of measure, of flat measure over the sphere, by projection on any given uh, axis, yields and interval designs or what I earlier called quadratures that allow you for integration over an interval. In the case of uh, octahedron we can actually see that by taking uh, the axis that is going through the centers of faces we are getting the, this plus minus one over square root of three Gauss quadrature and by taking the axis that goes through the vertices we are actually arriving this one for one what I remember to be called the Simpson rule. So this was a little bit of a introduction uh, motivation is something that uh, you can see instead of only seeing uh, equations. So let me go on to consider what do we think about when we say complex projective T design. But by now I believe you should uh, have a feeling what I'm going to say. Just take a little set of states. Now, right now we are uh, thinking about complex projective designs in terms of quantum mechanics a finite set of states and a balanced polynomial of uh, the uh, components of the state 
and, and they're conjugates, we are sitting in dimension D and this specific set of states is called a T design if average over higher measure of over the space of states, Hilbert space complex projective uh, space, uh, in this case we are thinking about uh, them as equivalent, it allows us to not approximate but exactly evaluate averages of uh, polynomials up to degree T. There is an equivalent uh, formulation of this that T copy average of the states over the the flat Haar measure over the space is equal to the average of a th of t copies over the finite set under consideration. This is uh, because the t copy ver projector uh, contains actually all uh, balanced uh, monomials of degree t. So, a little bit of uh, setting a, of the scene. Now, how do we identify complex projective t designs? One uh, quite simple and uh, well-known uh, way of doing this is through so-called Welsh bounds. So if you take the gram matrix, so the matrix containing all possible um, inner products between the states belonging to any given set, then this, the sum of absolute values it, to certain powers, to the 2t, is always lower bounded by a specific combinatorial expression. And interestingly, it is saturated if and only if the set of states that are normalized under consideration is a T complex projective T design. So it's quite a useful, straightforward and accessible tool to identify whether or not a given set is a T design. Yes, so just summarizing what I said uh, on the slide, a little quick uh, examples. So, just to set up uh, the common uh, knowledge here. First one is uh, the SIGPOVM, so we are thinking about them as a set of D squared equiangular states, something similar to a regular simplex but for complex state, uh, spaces instead of uh, real spaces. The second one, which I will refer to in a second uh, more closely, is so-called mutually unbiased basis. Now I just realized that I didn't uh, put a name on this particular slide yet. However, let, let just keep in mind that the name here is abbreviated usually to MUB. So how do we find an MUB as powers of a single specified unitary matrix? Now, first, we need to find a very specific, very precisely inclined axis in the block ball, block sphere more specifically, and now by, by choosing the proper angle of rotation, in this case it will be 2 pi over 3, we are arriving at three orthogonal axes which are actually correspond to this mutually unbiased condition between three bases of the two-dimensional space. Now, you may be getting a little bit of a feeling of what I might be getting at once I speak about uh, cyclic designs. First, first things first, if you give me an arbitrary T design, it will usually have a complicated structure. For instance, the states going into the set will not actually form any kinds of bases, and if they do, they will be will require different preparation procedures so will come from very different unitaries with uh, underlying Hamiltonians that are not compatible. So pretty much uh, getting access to such uh, a set of states measurements will be hard. So this is why we came up with uh, the idea of a cyclic T design, which is actually a no notion that is generated by taking a single selected uh, basis, can can be comp computational basis, and applying uh, powers of the unitary uh, matrix, a fixed one, to the states in order to generate all states that constitute for us a complex projective T design. So to give you a little bit of an example that is beyond MUBs, still thinking graphically, we can 
extend a little bit instead of 2 pi over 3 have the rotation angle to be 2 pi over 4 so we are generating something that looks like a cube a 4 measurement basis which are no, no longer unbiased but still provide for us a cyclic 2 design and 3 design at the same time which is due to certain uh, specificity of dimension 2 with respect to symmetries we can follow up to generate a um, pentagonal antiprism and this process can be repeated over and over to generate a fi an infinite uh, well uh, described family of cyclic 2 and 3 designs in dimension 2 which is quite unique in this specific case now a little bit of a detour because I will need you, you to understand certain notions first of all a notion of a <coughs> Uh, simplex, d dimensional simplex, this is a simple thing, but a, d uh, a simplex design is, again, I am still repeating myself just uh, replacing uh, spaces underlying the notions with different spaces. So here we are thinking in terms of polynomials uh, over a probability simplex that are exactly evaluated by averaging sets of points within that simplex. Now, th this is a small thing just to set up the notation, uh, thinking about uh, the coherence of a state is simply a projection of the state on a selected basis. So, having set up this, I can tell you a little bit of uh, interesting observation about uh, cyclic designs and designs in general. First of all, an observation, a complex projective T design by the coherence is always yielding a T design or T prime design with larger T in the simplex for any basis with respect to which we will decohere it. This is actually a consequence of how this flat Haar measure over complex projective spaces is projected down to a flat uh, um, Lebesgue measure over the probability simplex once we take only the diagonal elements of, a, of any given projector over a state. So yes, this is uh, pretty much an observation. But a converse thing is that any set is not a complex projective T design if there exists at least a single basis for which uh, such a projection does not yield a, a simplex design. This is quite a simple consequence. Now, interestingly, uh, if, I, if you give me a unitary uh, operation, I can instantly tell you whether it can generate a cyclic design or not by just expecting the, the coherence of its uh, eigenbasis and checking if the D point that it generates actually yield a simplex design. Because this, this is like the minimal test. How, do, how can you see it? We just select the decoherence with respect to this specific eigenbasis and the states of any basis that is wrote, I mean, of a basis that is rotated with respect to our unitary in this eigenbasis just keep repeating themselves up to the amplitudes. The only thing that changes are the phases that are entering the states. So what does it actually tell us about the degree of uh, any cyclic design? Interestingly, if uh, you give me a d-point set in a, in a simplex, of dimension D, it cannot have any larger uh, design uh, degree than 2. In particular, you can think about uh, 2 that, sorry, I'm uh, saying uh, D dimensional simplex, but I uh, think about uh, D point simplex. So 3 point simplex and 3 points within it yield a simplex uh, 2 design if and only if they are a regular triangle which is of a very specific radius the situation repeats in higher dimensions so a consequence of this is that a cyclic projective design for generic dimension cannot have a degree larger than two the exception is uh, dimension two and this is specifically because of uh, symmetries uh, of an interval which uh, instantly yields for any even the uh, even degree of design at t plus one odd 
degree design. So a two design is a three design at the same time, four design is a five design, and so on. So yes, so far you have uh, seen a, one of the one property. Now let's move on to constructions, but in order to describe for you how you can actually construct the cyclic designs in higher dimensions, I will need a second detour into something that's called different sets and circular golem rollers. What is it? So, think about a, a set of D integers modulo sum k plus 1. And now this thing, this set is called a different set if any pair, for any pair of uh, integers, the um, difference is, the differences do not uh, align unless the pair is exactly the same. <coughs> if you think about uh, the matrix of differences, it is quite simple to check that uh, the, the k, the, the modulo order of the field over which we are uh, playing around, of the group, needs to be greater than d times d minus 1. This is just counting the off-diagonal terms. And if you give me any different set that uh, um, saturates this bound, it is actually referred to as circular golem ruler. Unfortunately, it's not uh, known whether it, such uh, sets exist for every dimension. For small dimensions, they have been found, but uh, at some point you have only constructions for specific uh, cases like uh, prime dimensions or something like this. However, if you give me k that is large enough, one can uh, construct a different set which is not a Golomb pruller, but it still exists, which is uh, quite useful because if you want to construct a, a cyclic design, you need just a handful of uh, ingredients, which are relatively simple to come by. First is a basis which, by the coherence, yields a two design in the simplex. These can be either found uh, analytically, or if uh, if hard enough for each dimension, uh, it is possible to generate such object uh, numerically. So far as uh, we have been uh, looking into it. Second the case is uh, to find a d-element difference set of order k. And as I mentioned, if you give me k large enough, I will always be able to construct such a set. So this is again easy to come by. So how do we construct uh, the cyclic design? We take uh, the elements of the difference set and translate them into the phases going into the eigenvalues. And the unitary is just uh, sandwiched between uh, the matrices V there for making uh, the basis con corresponding to it the eigenbasis of our unitary. So at this point, all the ingredients seem to be in place. I will not bore you with the specifics of proof. Let me just mention that if you want to demonstrate that this works, you just need to consider the Welsh bounds that I mentioned uh, previously. The whole lengthy calculations are laid down in the preprint. Now, what do we know if you take something beyond the standard cyclic... Uh, so, uh, Kuba, can I ask something? Yes, of course, please. Uh, yeah, so can you comment, uh, there is this different set, uh, yes. D, like how constructive, uh, so, so, because I didn't, I mean, you covered uh, a couple of things, so, so is it <coughs> like... I know. Uh, do you have uh, explicit examples of it? Like, or it's just known to exist. Uh, can you find algorithms um, for, uh, for finding it? And lastly, okay, for, like this, okay, I have some further follow up <laughs> questions, but maybe. No, yeah. for, for sure. For sure. I, I do realize that there is uh, quite a bit uh, of uh, thinking about of things that I failed to mention in a sense, but this is why I encouraged uh, each and every uh, question. So an example for different set, oh my goodness, can you see it? it? You can, it's just a little delayed on my screen. So think about k equals 7. And an example of a different set is just to have three numbers. 1, 2, and 4. 
if you start calculating the differences of those numbers, you will find that you are able to get all the numbers from 1 to 6 without repetitions. And keep in mind that we are working modulo 7, therefore anything that is uh, negative, like minus 1, is actually jumping behind 7. So 1 minus 2 will be actually 6. More or less, this is one example. Larger sets, I would be able to, f to find you a specific um, uh, reference to a place where, where they found small sets, uh, small different sets, the, the saturating ones, and a construction uh, for, arbit for arbitrary k and, uh, sorry, for d and k large enough is based on powers of uh, 2. So if you set, uh, set k large enough, you will be able just to take uh, 2 to the first, 2 to the second, sorry, 2 to the power 0, 1, 2, and so on, and just set k large enough that the uh, differences do not overlap modulo. This is the idea. There are better works uh, on the prime dimensions, but still constructions are for rather large d. Yeah, uh, thanks, Kuba. Yeah, hopefully this, this uh, clarifies it a little bit, but that may be a useful example to get a little bit of a feel of it. So yes, we've been here. I wanted to mention a little bit about uh, what numerics shows us, because it turns out that this construction is not the only thing that exists. <coughs> yeah, this is it. This is first thing. It turns out that uh, one can get uh, all d plus one MUBs, but only for the case when you have two to the n MUBs. Sorry. 2 to the n uh, qubits, so dimension is quite large. And apparently the, the number of bases that are generated here is way smaller than the bound that is coming from the differences. Therefore, they, might have, they must have a different origin. Then, what we know numerically is that uh, for dimension 4, we've been able to find uh, sets that that have this k equal to 6, 7, 10, whereas uh, the structures that uh, would come from different sets would need to have k at least 12. What, uh, therefore, there is still some uh, space to be explored here. And now, I forgot that I have this uh, specific example to just put forward and uh, uh, give you to think a little bit about it because it's always always welcome if somebody can find a structure behind it. For dimension four, you can just take the zero, one, two, and three with proper eigenbases and generate a cyclic design from this. We unfortunately haven't been able to pinpoint uh, the properties that are beyond differences that allow you to construct this kind of structures. So yes, may I, may I have a question at this point? Of course. Uh, this question is the following. If you are able to find different, uh, let's say, given dimension, okay, you are given a dimension yes. D, and you are able to find different different sets, does it provide mm -hmm. uh, an equivalent set of mutually unbiased bases? Um, first things first. Um, uh, uh, mutually unbiased bases can be generated from different sets only for dimension 2, which is a trivial case. We know of construction uh, in dimension 4, 8, and sorry, 4, 16, and it, it goes iteratively. But uh, in, the, in this uh, scenario, it cannot come from uh, any different set. Th this is uh, actually the, the specific thing uh, that you can see here. There is just not enough of them uh, for uh, the different set to be the or like basis for this. So I think that the answer is no because they do not exist as a, as something constructed from uh, different sets. Okay. So yes, but uh, if you give me different different sets beyond MUBs, the structures that come from them may be uh, inequivalent even if the like uh, the number of uh, entries in the different set is equal so this is the general idea behind this hopefully okay, this sir. clarifies a little bit the, the relations yes thank you okay 
So this is uh, so far speaking around the exact ideas. Now I will need a, a th another detour. Sorry for the number of detours during this talk, but apparently there is plenty of uh, concepts that are outside of the standard scope that need to be introduced. The idea of approximate projective design, which is a little bit less popular than approximate unitary designs, and that was introduced in a quite obscure paper from Ambinis and Emerson, at least uh, when you think about uh, approximate structures. So they we are actually using something that is very close to their definition, but not exactly, because we are saying that a set is an approximate T design if the Welsh um, bound is scaled by one plus epsilon. Therefore, it's just epsilon uh, away in the relative sense. This actually comes close to the definition that uh, was uh, put forward uh, in originally. That is in terms of infinity norm between uh, the approximation of T copies, T copy average, which is uh, again scaled. This is something I uh, just uh, put in for brevity dimension of symmetric subspace, which is equal exactly to this polynomial. <coughs> so there is direct uh, connection between the two. Now, an interesting uh, application of this kind of structures is uh, approximate reconstruction of states. So if you give me an approximate D, uh, T design with a given epsilon, a reconstruction formula using states from a, from the T design is as uh, below. This is actually a well-known uh, expression when you think about uh, the standard two design tomography. However, uh, one is uh, a, we could uh, demonstrate that the distance between the original state rho and the reconstructed st state rho tilde is upper bounded by expressions that are connecting uh, the dimensionality of the system, the degree of uh, the design, and the epsilon of the approximation. And here you can actually see that if we set epsilon equal to zero, the error coming into play is going to zero and just uh, giving us back the original formula known for two designs. So why did I mention this? Because sometimes it's hard to find uh, an exact cyclic design or it, it may be a hard thing to implement very specific uh, energy levels that are imposed from different set or any set, any structure that is underlying the theoretic uh, considerations. Therefore, if you cannot do an exact one, one can also create a, a very good approximation of a cyclic design from random. And what do I mean? We can uh, take, okay, as long as we are able to prepare an eigenbasis V, this should be capital, but we are we have no control over energy levels which are taken from some distribution we still can do something so we can simplify the matter to by assuming that the energy levels are taken uh, uh, from a flat distribution over zero to two pi which is actually uh, true when you consider long enough evolution with respect to the standard Gaussian unitary ensemble. And if you take uh, this assumption to be sensible, then if you, if you give me a set of states generated by powers of a fixed unitary, then, there's, uh, then the design that is uh, coming out of it in, a, in the process, the cyclic epsilon design, will have on average epsilon given by d minus one over k plus one. So it grows with the dimension of the system, but goes down to zero as we increase the, the number of powers under consideration. Therefore, you can refine your approximate design just with uh, applying the, the same process over and over again. So, 
just to give you a little bit of a summary, as I always say. Uh, so, I, uh, Tomac, can I yeah. uh, ask some? Yes, please, questions? please, of course. So, because uh, this is some nice, uh, uh, some nice result or nice thing I wasn't aware of, and somehow it's related to to some things. Uh, uh, like uh, me and, and Marcin Kotowski did in the past. So, oh, okay. I, uh, first question, is it something that you guys came up with or it's some known result? Mm, this approximation, I can tell you that I do not know of its presence in the literature anywhere. <coughs> right. And basically the whole derivation you can find it. I think it's already present in the current version of uh, archive preprint, so we can read it and uh, see if you recognize it from somewhere else. I am not aware of, uh, of any other source. Right. And uh, thanks. Uh, and second question. So, mm -hmm. uh, are you sort of confined to be like a, to, uh, let's say, to design here? Uh, like, can't you uh, sort of do better or? Like uh, and do better. Like in a sense, mm -hmm. like, are you, can you go beyond two designs, or you? Okay, so uh, two stuff okay. about two designs. This I can. Uh, I, okay, I think one could uh, prove the epsilon uh, property beyond two design. This is there is no problem with this, although the calculations would be a little bit more nasty. However, if you want uh, exact designs, this is uh, limited by the fact. Uh, okay, by the by the properties of simplex designs because oh no no, no. i let's say i'm personally like a fan of uh, approximate designs of course okay like because uh, yeah they like mm -hmm. exactly they have like tectonic object uh, but okay. like can you do can you have like three approximate two design a uh, three design four design k design like t design okay. so the question uh, of whether this epsilon is not saturating for higher degrees is something that can be calculated for sure. What I can uh, like tell you up, up in front is that this will be non-vanishing as you increase mm -hmm. the number of uh, objects. And this is right. limited. Yeah, but, I mean, why? Because if you decohere the whole set with respect to the eigenbasis, you will generate no more than D points. And this is yeah. important uh, thing because D points can generate no more than two design in the simplex. Mm -hmm. And if you want a, if you want a higher degree of design that is vanishing, the set of points that you are generating would need to be a th three, four, and T design in the simplex as well, which is impossible with a single basis. There is a, however, okay. an idea. There is something that I'm entertaining a, a little bit because. We know about the construction of SIG PO VMs uh, by act acting with uh, the Weil Heisenberg group, right? Sure. And this is, and this is actually a little bit similar, but you don't have UI only, but there is UI and V, some that different WJ. You have two, mm -hmm. uh, two uh, unitaries that are actually generating for you more than that. So I was thinking whether it's possible by taking UI for going from 0 to k and another matrix just 0, 1, to have not one basis that is rotating, but two mm -hmm. of them, so that you would have two times d points in the simplex. Um, so, right. I, what I can tell you so, is that for a qubit, this would already generate four or five designs. Right. So I, I wanted like maybe to, to pinpoint some high-level mm -hmm. co uh, connection, uh, yeah, because okay. actually, uh, I mean, yeah, like uh, to some degree, like there is some like in general interest in you know approximate either stage designs or uh, unitary mm -hmm. designs. And I think around like a year ago, it, like there was some quite interesting okay. work about generating approximate unitary designs by mm -hmm. just combining uh, two random GUE evolutions. Okay. You know, like all uh, you, right, yeah, right. It was from like a group from Stanford, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. so, so uh, like, and in short, they they were able <coughs> to prove that for quite high degrees, you can you can actually uh, form in this way approximate uh, uh, T design unitary mm -hmm. T designs, even efficiently uh, without having to implement. GUE evolutions themselves. 
Okay. 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 Uh, okay. This sounds. So this sounds plausible. The, uh, but, but the idea, sort of, high level idea here is sort of uh, like similar, I, maybe like follow up, you know, uh, after the, the talk. But it's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. nice things that you guys are exploring here. Yeah. Uh, it's, so so it's here you have this quick time mm -hmm. dynamics. There it was a bit yeah. more like on high level, it was related. But, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I will need to look into it. To, if you can share the reference later, I would be very grateful. So yeah, um, actually, th this is uh, pretty much the gist of the talk. And I wanted to just give you a little bit uh, of a short summary of what I told you today. And you you might uh, use it uh, as a reference frame, so to speak. <laughs> so complex first thing, complex productivity designs can be generated from a single unitary operation. This is something that we refer to as cyclic projective T-designs. Second of all, by thinking uh, in terms of projecting them onto the probability simplex, or however we think about it, they cannot be of degree larger than two or larger than three if you think about qubit designs. This is a very specific case. Then, if you have a different set and a basis that uh, provides you with a two-design and a simplex by the coherence, you actually have all the things you need for constructing a cyclic design. However, it's not the only case. We are not exhaustive in this uh, regime. And if anybody has an idea of on how to extend this towards smaller sets than the Golomb circular rulers, so the smallest difference uh, sets available, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. And finally, there is an idea of approximate cyclic designs where you fix a specific Hamiltonian, just let it evolve. And it turns out that uh, if you happen to be able to provide a, a specific uh, eigenbasis, then you are happy because you are generating a, an approximate cyclic design with vanishing approximation. Uh, so yes, this is pretty much the whole presentation, which, as I mentioned, would be going uh, under time without uh, questions. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, I'm afraid we, ha we don't have any Spanish speakers in the audience, but just to comment, the photo is from uh, Santiago de Chile when, uh, where I was uh, developing some of those frameworks. So yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for a very interesting uh, talk uh, concerning uh, Spanish speakers. Victor was <laughs> expected to be here, but but he's not apparently for some reason. So what can we do? Nothing actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are there any further questions or comments? I can ask probably one more question, a bit naive, but could you okay. please could you please comment something about a uh, relation? Actually, it, it appeared on your slides a uh, connection to CPO VMs. Can you connect? Is there any relation between cyclic designs and the existence of CPO VMs in okay. uh, in dimensions which we don't know whether they exist currently? So let me just uh, scroll down so that everybody knows what uh, we are referring to. So SIGPO VMs are those uh, sort of simplicial structures in the complex spaces uh, or equiangular sets of lines. And now the only connection that I so far know, okay, maybe two. First is via this uh, Weil Heisenberg group, which is uh, kind of looking like a doubly cyclic structure, but and this is a huge but, it acts only on a single fiducial state instead of a full basis. Therefore, it's not a direct connection. The other one, and this is quite interesting. Okay, these are the MUBs. But if you think about uh, what kind of a structure is geometrically a cyclic, sorry, a sig POVM, it is just a regular simplex. So two of those, can be arranged to form a cube. And this is something that was called in the literature a CPOVM compound. And I know only of one uh, 
a work that is uh, kind of trying to find them, but I don't remember that they found anything beyond two CPO VM compounds in dimension two specifically. However, if there exists more of them, it would be a nice question to ask whether you can generate those by cyclic operation. Sorry, by, uh, from, from a single unitary. This is far from obvious, I would say. Because, yeah, because you, you mentioned this fiducial vector which is used <coughs> to construct CPO VMs in, in some particular dimensions, which looks similarly to, to the cyclic um, structures that, you, that, you, that you've presented, because this is exactly the same mm -hmm. idea. You, you start with one object, either yes. a fiducial vector, either a unitary matrix, and then some mm -hmm. powers or other um, operations provide a uh, full structure which is uh, which you need uh, either CPO VM or MUB or uh, whatever you want. Yes, yes, of course. And okay, I can offer you one more piece of uh, relation that is somewhere in the background, because if if you think about the clock oper clock or yeah clock operator that mm -hmm. just cycles the elements of the state, and the entire action of this on the fiducial vector has to be such that it generates the simplicial to design and after this uh, the phase operator just uh, adds the phases so the the phase the version of the cp of m is also this d point structure in the probability simplex so there is some close connection but if you think about any subset of cp of m it cannot be a basis therefore there is something different at play mm -hmm. okay are there yep. any questions or comments from the audience? I, I, I have I, a small one. question. Okay. Uh, is there any connection with this uh, cyclic designs uh, and this uh, trine or tetrad ensembles, this type of stuff? Uh, can you repeat what is ensembles? I think I'm... Um... Uh, trine ensemble or uh, tetrad ensemble. I think I'm not familiar with the concept, so it, I I won't be able to answer you, you like... Uh, okay, mm -hmm. okay, okay, okay. Uh, if you consider uh, simplex structure like a triangle, and yeah. if you consider equispaced uh, states in qubit, let's say, uh, uh -huh, where yeah. the, the inner products that is uh, between any two states is preserved, mm -hmm. then it is basically trine ensemble. Now, if we go to uh, tetrahedral, then it is tetrad ensemble. So okay. I was thinking that if uh, there is any connection between this type of states and cyclic designs. Mm, okay, because you're referring to the... Um, I'm not sure if uh, such ensembles are not uh, naturally generated, uh, but... No, I, I would need to think about it because this is uh, something new and we didn't consider this specific connection. But the, I'm not the, saying that it's not uh, not existing. We just don't know about it. Okay, okay. Uh, so maybe I shall also go through your paper. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the comment. Thank you very Hi, much. I had a, oh. Sorry, I had a very yeah. stupid question <laughs> if, I, if I can ask. Sure, Oli. Uh, so in your... I was kind of surprised about your definition, I think, of two designs because you, um, it looked like the, you required the the vectors to be sampled from the Haar measure, right? Uh, like uh, it's, the, the distribution is, in, is uniform over all the vectors in the design. <coughs> and I, mm. I was kind of surprised about this because I guess this isn't okay. necessary, right? You can like sample them with some probabilities, which are not all the same in general. Um, so does this change anything or is this just like a, is this, does, okay. it, does this not make a difference? Uh, two, two comments on this, because uh, the left-hand side is naturally taken uh, to be the hard measure, so to speak, because this is like the natural thing that uh, is within the space. However... I mean, on the right-hand not... side, sorry, not on the left-hand side. Oh, oh, oh okay. Like, it's, this distribution on the right-hand side is like, is uniform, right? It's over the... No, 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 no. It's, it's not necessarily uniform. It just looks uniform up to some degree. I mean, I'm not saying uh, anything about the sampling of this uh, of these states. They are just selected in such a way that they mimic the flat distribution. Um, I mean, the, the I, thinking is the other way around. 
Okay, I think I missed something. Because okay, just like on the on the right hand side of this first equation, you can yeah. insert some coefficients, basically. This is all I'm saying. Ah, is, uh, and I, okay, and I also, so yeah, so I don't know if this adds any generality. The... Or like... Okay, because sure, you could think about uh, no weighted uh, projective designs, of course. Mm -hmm. But this, this is, is how it was uh, when you were doing um, like quartiles. Yeah. The, okay. Because uh, let me just uh, walk back to here. There is no trouble with defining the weighted uh, design, of course. But uh, our main uh, focus was on the unweighted sets, and you okay. can you will find in uh, literature many examples of weighted s sets that have almost minimal number of points. Mm -hmm. But still, the weights may be like a very large uh, weight to the central point and very small uh, weights to the extremal points. This is something that uh, you will find. But yeah, we focused on the unweighted case. Okay, sure. So generali you haven't looked at generalizing it to... Uh, you could... F okay, I can actually uh, note you because we tried to find a weighted uh, uh, cyclic design so that uh, there are different ways to different powers uh, of the unitary mm -hmm. acting on the states. However, it turns out that uh, if you th if you try to numerically minimize it, you actually end up with uh, unweighted designs. Oh, that's interesting. So the weights, okay, that's cool. Yeah, they, they kind of collapse uh, to be equal. OK, interesting. Uh, well, yeah, it's it's surprising. I, I don't have a proper explanation for you about that. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. Sure. So yeah. I can't see Any it. more questions? <laughs> yeah, I can't see any more questions, any more comments. So let me stop this seminar, the first seminar in this semester. Kuba, thank you very much for delivering a very interesting talk. Thank you for having me.